Hello, so I'm going to be answering now the uh, questions in relation to uh, how uh, this week has developed my or expanded my knowledge and skill sets and how it will help me in the future and also post up some of the issues I encountered during the development for this week um, because they both really sort of relate to um, the programming um, issues I encountered um, and expanding my knowledge in it, which has been fantastic. Um, the other video really covers the first and third question here, um, the critique and feedback and um, how it's um, the development and how it's actually uh, expand, uh, in making me reach my, my second milestone, which is really great. So I will now go to the scripting here. So um, what we have here, um, in front of you that you're looking at is a script called follow path. Now this is in relation to the actual player uh, character, I click here, um, they have the script follow path. And in here you see some exposed variables, um, oh, sorry, public variables. Um, and I'll go through what all these mean and, and, and how it's actually been really helpful um, learning uh, this uh, information. I've actually been going through um, some tutorials online which have been absolutely amazing um, in, uh, in helping me uh, with this side of the project and I'll just bring them up as well. Um, the first one was uh, Holistic 3D. Um, Dot com tutorials. Uh, it's basically um, a whole bunch of amazing Unity 3D tutorials done by a professor um, in Australia who actually teaches Unity. And uh, some of the scripting um, lessons that I got from her were absolutely amazing. Um, first one was, of course, the drawing on screen um, tutorial. And then the second one was uh, Unity Mobile from scratch drawing multiple lines. So this was where I'll just um, not get the sound going if you don't need two things going. Um, but it was a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually get the uh, multiple lines working, um, as you'll see here in the little tutorial. Um, and it was, uh, it, it was exactly what I was after. So um, online uh, tutorials have just been fantastic for this uh this project and um, and learning really. Uh, the second one was uh, by this group called You Contribute Games. Um, if I go to this side, it doesn't really have anything, um, but what it uh, does have on the YouTube side of um, content is there is oh, some Family Guy stuff. Um, I wonder if it's under why you contribute games. Yes, awesome. So, um, this here, these three videos right here, um, Unity uh, Path Tutorial Part 1, 2, and 3. So I went through these tutorials, it's about an hour long, oh, it took about three hours um, to get through them after um, coding everything. I'm not copying and pasting any code, um, I'm coding it by myself. Um, I say by myself, but I'm, I'm coding every word um, because I, I really enjoy the feeling of um, typing it all in myself because then I can actually sort of, it starts to flow in my mind um, naturally um, in relation to like keywords, um, putting in um, variable names, um, methods, statements, debugs and stuff like that. It's, it's been really, really helpful. So I'll just stop yattering on about that stuff and talk about what these do. So this is the follow path script. Um, as I said, it's attached to the uh, player game object, which actually is... Um, set to actually look for this public um, declared game object called my path um, and that is this path here which is a series or an array of other um, of it's a parent game object with an array of smaller game objects and those smaller game objects or, or children are actually points within the actual path itself that will uh, dictate where the player should move to next so if I click on here and uh, actually click on the player game object, oh, actually, it's showing here. So as you can see, um, these this information is changing. So we have um, sort of get into it. There's different points. There's point zero, moves to point one, point two, point three, moves back to two, moves back to one, moves back to zero, 
one, two. So it's going back and forth. And here we have movement direction. When it's uh, a value of one, it moves forward. And with the value of negative one, it moves backwards. And it just goes through these, um, these children back and forth over and over uh, to um, create the illusion of movement. What other room is it? It's real, it's real movement. <laughs> um, now I'll go back into the player. Um, here we also have things like the maximum speed. So sp I'm setting the speed in which it will actually uh, move to each point. Um, also these two different types of movement, um, which have been really interesting. I've learned quite a lot about uh, vector3.lerp, which was a bit confusing to start off with, but um, it's been really helpful to sort of uh, figure out because I wasn't quite sure why I characters if I actually change this to lerp um, Now it will give a demonstration of lerp movement, which it should Yeah, so it does this sort of crazy movement. So it, I'll actually turn that speed all the way down um, Maybe it's that low. Let's go. Yeah, that's, that's a bit better too. So as you can see here it um it goes at its maximum speed to the halfway point, and then from that point, it'll go at a speed, um, it'll go to the halfway point between 50% and all the way, and then it'll, it'll keep chopping the, the length of the, um, of the distance down and sort of reduce the speed um, as it reaches each point. It's a really neat effect and creates this nice sort of slow, smooth movement. Um, oh, one button. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the follow path script. As you can see, I've uh, actually also put in all the uh, comments because I think that's really helpful. And I'll be doing that throughout all the scripts, just to sort of show that I have been um, learning and also uh, help myself actually understand um, what each different uh, line of text is actually doing uh, in my scripts. Uh, this is the movement path. So this is actually how the um, how this dictates the direction in which this path is actually um, uh, executed. Uh, so if I actually go into the demo path, there is two different line paths. So if I click here and it will go linear, it will go back and forth. So if we look at the bottom screen, oh, sorry, I'll just get that variable chained. Let's go back to move. There we go, it's a bit better. Sorry, I'm in play mode, so I won't save. Um, but if I change linear to loop, it'll actually go across. If you just see there, it goes two to one to zero, and then it goes all the way back to three. So it's always doing that movement. Um, so that's the different types. So yeah, I've learned quite a bit. Um, I've learned about uh, enums. I had no idea you could just do an enum as simply as, as that. Just public enum pass types, give the two names, and then within the text actually state what these two uh, enum states are and actually create a drop-down box. I've never done that before, actually having a drop-down box um, as a um, as something that you can um, publicly expose to um, for game designers to actually, you know, play around with. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, so that's the, uh, the, the follow path, the movement path, and this is the swipe trail. So this is actually copied from the uh, the actual tutorial. Um, the reason I say that is in relation to the problem that I had. I actually typed it out word for word and have gone through it several times, but for some reason, I've actually, this is an edited version, of course, because I was working on it and um, some few things weren't, weren't working. Because as for example, I was starting to create um, my next step in the program, which is actually putting the two together. I copied it word for word, but for some reason it wasn't working. So I'm going to have to go through it again. Um, I've done it a few times, but there's something missing. I'm going to have to try and figure it out um, what the uh, what the issue is. But at this current stage, this is the um, the text here. As you can see, I was already starting to um, comment on it, but then something's happened. <laughs> Problem with code. Once you get it working, it starts to break. Um, so yeah, uh, it's pretty. This has been ultimately the most valuable information for me. Um, if I ever want to make mobile applications or things that way use um, touch phases, which I think is really cool. Oh, only got 30 seconds. Um, touch phase began and input uh, mouse button having actually two um, different uh, two, two different instances of input um, called, called in the same if statement. So if you actually are in this touch phase or if the mouse button is just, or if the input get mouse button is being activated with the left mouse button click, 
um, then carry out this function. I thought that was really good. And yeah, see you later. Bye.